Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Bella. So this is week two of weekly Wednesday teachings. This is episode two. So if you don't know, I do a community poll post every Sunday and I have two options for a video and you guys vote on what video you guys want to see on Wednesdays. So this week, the episode is going to be about what to do if you're not on fire for God. And I know how you feel. I've been there where you don't want to pray, you don't want to read your Bible, you just don't care anymore about the things of God, but you want to, but your flesh is like overtaking you. So let's get into this right now. So what is being on fire for God? Being on fire for God is a term us Christians use when we're describing our love and our passion for the things of God. And sometimes as Christians, we go through seasons where we're not on fire for God, where we don't feel passionate. We just go through the motions. It's almost like a religious thing. Like we don't even like care anymore. We're just going through the motions or we've fallen away from God. We backslid. And I've been through it so many times where like all of a sudden I'm on fire for the Lord. And then all of a sudden my fire just dwindles. And this could be for many reasons. It could be you give in to sin, you hang out with the wrong people. Like, it's for a many number of reasons. And, you know, it happens. And the Lord gives us so much grace. And I just want to let you know right now, God is not mad at you. This video is on your screen for a reason. And I believe the Lord wants to rekindle that fire. He wants to light your soul on fire. And, like, I'm not talking about that. Like, people are like, what does that mean? That's kind of creepy. On fire for God? Like, that sounds weird. No. No, it's not weird. It's just simply being passionate about the things of God. And I believe the devil's, like, biggest weapon against Christians is to make us, like, feel like we have to fit in with the world to be able to make friends or get an, a relationship, which is a big lie. The devil likes to make us feel like we're freaks or like we're weird. So then we go back to the world and follow what the, what the world tells us to follow. And then that's how we lose our fire for God. We give into our flesh, we give into our sin. We try to fit in and instead of going for what God has called us to be, we, we go back to the world. And that is definitely a reason you may not be on fire for God. Another reason might be like, you're just like in a grieving season. You're, I, I like to call it like a Job season. If you've read like the book of Job, uh, I'm just gonna explain it for the people who haven't. There's this person named Job in the Bible and he was a faithful servant to God. And the devil said, really like, I bet if you take away everything he has, he would curse your name. So God did to prove him wrong, prove Satan wrong, because God knew what would happen. So Job lost everything. I believe he lost his son. He was sick. He lost everything. But he still never, ever, ever, ever cursed God's name. He was grieving. He was depressed. But... Sometimes we're, when we're in our Job season, when we're grieving a loss, when we're depressed, like when something's going on in our life, that could also be a reason for us not to be on fire for God because we're going through a season. And sometimes like God puts us in those seasons to make us realize like all we need is Jesus. Sometimes we need to lose everything to realize that we find everything through Christ, you know? Like if I lost everything and I still had Jesus, I would still have everything. I wouldn't really lose anything because I would still have Jesus by my side. And one of the most comforting things about following Jesus is I know he's never going to forsake me. No matter what I do, no matter what happens, I know he's not going to leave me because he promises that. And like ever since I was little, I knew he had his hand over my life. And I know he's protecting me from so much things. Like there's so many times where I should have been beat up or I should have been hurt where some other people should have been hurt in my life but the lord's been so good and so faithful and he's protecting me but that's besides the point sorry guys sometimes i just ramble on about how good god is i get i jump around from like different things but anyways sometimes when we're going through a season of grief 
or like we're going through a hard time, sometimes we lose our passion for God. And I just believe that once you're out of this season, the Lord's going to use how he's touched your life and touched your soul as a testimony. And he's going to give you that boldness and passion for God again. I believe he wants to give you the fire of God. I believe he wants to use you because he loves you and he died for you. You know, there's so many times in my life where I've just been like, oh yeah, I gotta read my Bible, I gotta pray. But after I'm done, I realize God is so good. Even though I'm not good, God is still good to me. And then I just feel so much gratitude and appreciation towards God because he's been with me even when I am not with him. He's always been so close to me. He's always so close to us. Like, I'm sorry, guys. I don't mean to, like, get prophetic here. Like, the Lord's really speaking out of me. Like, I feel like the reason we're not on fire for God is because we don't realize the weight and the gravity of what he's done for us. I feel like it's a heart posture because if your heart is postured towards the Lord humbly and gratefully, the Bible says to enter his gates with prayer praise and thanksgiving don't enter it with doubt like oh god can you do this like can you do that no we need to have faith because faith as small as a mustard seed moves mountains doubt does not help anything doubt does not make the mountains move doubt stiffens the mountains if you're like god like can you do this like i mean like if you want no we have authority in the name of jesus authority in the name of jesus so if you want to get closer to god if you want to feel that fire for the lord here are some things i recommend doing i recommend reading the bible because you don't really know god unless you know his word and the way to hear his voice the way to be on fire for the lord the way to follow him is to read the bible read the bible i was telling somebody the other day i was like so you want to get closer to god like okay I recommend reading the Bible. Read the book of John because it is a story of Jesus and it has so many of his teachings in it. And it really changed my life. I remember the first time I read the book of John, like I read like the audiobook Bible and I was home like from school sick and I was like, you know what? I, I want to get closer to God and I'm going to listen to the book of John. And I was just like, wow, this is who Jesus is his way of teaching is so profound and so beautiful and like another book i recommend reading is the book of psalms if you don't know how to pray just pray the book of psalms so beautiful i love the book of psalms like i could highlight every single verse in that book because man like it's truly something else it's so relatable for especially us teenagers because we face a lot of drama we face a lot of hate especially when we're christians especially when we're bold about our faith. Another thing I recommend reading is the book of Romans. It teaches us how to live a godly life. And the letters from Paul to the church, definitely read those too. And definitely read the book of Job as well, because if you're going through a Job era, if you're going through a Job season in your life, read the book of Job so you can be prepared and learn how to handle this. The Bible says, lie down and do not sin. It's okay to grieve. It's okay to have your moments where you're not okay because the Lord understands. Jesus understands you. And Jesus says that there's going to be trials, but do not fear because he's overcome the world. And he's with us in those trials. So he's always going to be with us no matter what. So definitely do that. Sec second of all, make sure you pray. You know, I saw this video on Instagram. I think I posted it on my story. And it was about being honest to God, being real with God. And it like was so inspiring to me. I put it on my story and it was like, be real with God. If you don't, if you don't feel like praying, if you don't love him, be honest. If you don't feel sorry about your sins, be honest because we all like act fake in front of God and try to please him. But the Lord already knows your heart posture. So you gotta be honest with him because he wants your honesty and he wants your heart. So be honest with how you feel and ask the Lord to light a fire down in your soul. There's a song I love. It's called Set a Fire. And it goes like, set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain or I can't control. I want more of you, God. What if we made that our prayer? 
set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain or I can't control. Because we just want more of you, Jesus. We want more of you. What if we stop filling ourselves up with the things of the world and the, instead we fill ourselves up with the things of God? Maybe the reason you're not on fire for God is because you're not getting your bread from the word of God. You're getting your bread from social media. Come on, everybody. I'm, I'm preaching here. I preach in love, not hatred. You know, you want to be on fire for God? You got to put in the effort. You know, your relationship with God is not a one-way relationship because... We got to put in the effort, you know, we got to put in the effort. Third thing I definitely recommend doing is cut out all bad secular music you listen to. Like secular music, like it is not from God. God created music to worship him and the devil was a worship leader before he got kicked out of, of heaven. So of course what the devil's going to do is he's going to try to pervert music. And like when I listen to secular music, like, when I have the urge to listen to it, I know I'm becoming too much like the world when I want to listen to the secular music. Because the secular music sings about the things of the world. And when we want to hear about the things of the world instead of the music of the gospel and Jesus, like, you know you're getting, like, far away from God. So when you feel tempted, like, it's a wake-up call. You need to get closer to God. That's what I'm saying. That's what the Lord gave me a revelation of. Like, when I want to listen to that music, like, I gotta, it's a wake-up call. It's really like, really a wake up call because when I want to listen to that demonic music, it's like, oh, oh, I'm becoming too much like the world. I don't want to do that. I don't want to become like the world. God says not to be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But those are a few ways to rekindle your fire for God. Read the Bible, pray, and listen to godly music. And Oh, the fourth one. Make sure you hang out with a body of believers. When you talk to unbelievers, people that don't follow God and people that do not care about the things of God, of course they're going to influence you. You know, you got to be careful who you hang out with and who you associate with. You know, it's one thing if you're helping them get closer to God and they're like your friend that you're helping. But you got to be careful who you hang out with because some people don't have your intentions in mind. They don't care. They don't care if they're going to lead you straight to hell because they're on the same path to hell. You don't want to go the same way as them. You know, you got to be careful whether it's a relationship. Maybe it's time for you to break up with that person because they're leading you astray from God. It's time. If you want to take your walk seriously with God, you got to sacrifice some things because God jesus literally died for you on the cross so the least you could do is sacrifice some things if you have friends that talk about the things of this world you know you're gonna feel tempted to like fit in with them and like it's gonna lead you astray from god so you need to be careful who you hang out with and who you associate with because also don't even get me started on the people that are secretly doing witchcraft on you like you got to be careful. You got to ask the Lord for, like, discernment. Like, I'm very careful about who I hang out with. Like, if I'm hanging out with someone who's not a Christian or doesn't follow God, I need to, like, make sure my intentions are, like, pure and why I'm hanging out with this person in the first place. Why am I talking to this person in the first place? Why am I reaching out to them in the first place? Is it to fit in or is it to change, you know? We can't change people, but we could plant seeds and we could help them with their journey with Christ. So you need to be careful about who you associate with, you know, for, um, what is it? There's a Bible verse in Proverbs that says for bad company corrupts good morals. You know, it's very important. And I know your journey with Christ, like it's going to be really overwhelming at first. Like if you haven't been really following him for a while, I would say start off small, like start off with like a few Bible verses a day, then move it up to a chapter Whatever the Lord calls you to, and in prayer too, like, you don't have to, like, pray, like, an hour a day. Like, that's just, like, you know, a lot. I'd say the Lord does not care about your time. It matters about the heart posture, and he just wants your heart, you know? He doesn't want you to be, like, forced to do this. He just really wants your true heart, and he wants you. He died for you, not your works you know it's only by faith not by works so just start off small because the lord honors what you're doing and it's gonna take time to get close to god 
I'm on a daily journey of denying myself and picking up my cross and following Jesus. It is a daily journey. We're all going to fall sometimes. We're all going to sin. We're all going to fall short of the glory of God. That's why he died for us. So it's going to take time. It's a journey, really. It's a constant journey. But the Lord is so proud of you for even wanting to get closer to him. But yeah, everybody, we're going to pray for that fire to be rekindled in you. So bow your heads and close your eyes. Alrighty, everybody, we're going to pray. Jesus, I just lift up the person in front of me right now, God. I just pray you light a fire down in their soul for you, God. You know, you say that you're a consuming fire, God. Consume them. Consume their thoughts, God. I just pray they stop trying to fit in with the world, God. And I just pray they try to please you, God. I just pray that their heart will belong to you, God, and that they fully surrender to you and your will, Jesus. And I just pray you bless them and that you let them know that you're with them, God. Help them, God, to start off small, but to start this journey of faith and help them get closer to you and help them know that they are loved by you, God. I just pray you heal them of whatever they're going through, God. I just pray you're with them, even in trials, God. And I just pray you help with their grief, their depression, Lord. I just pray every single spirit of depression has to flee in the name of Jesus. Lord, just deliver them of any demons they have, God. And I just pray full healing over them, God. And I just pray you light a fire down in them, Lord. Give them the boldness they need to start preaching to people and helping disciple other people, God. Give them the grace they need, Lord, to fight whatever addictions, whatever strongholds, whatever sins that hold them captive, God. And I just pray blessings and healing over them, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Alrighty, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this message and I really really also like me just preaching this myself like it's given me like a new fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit so this message is not only gonna help you it also helped me too so I'm really glad because I like I'm preaching to myself too I feel like we all need to hear this message so make sure you share this like this and subscribe if you're not already subscribed but anyways God bless y'all love you so much and I'm wishing you the bestest and prairie praying praying for your journey with christ because he's with you and he loves you but yeah just never give up because he's so proud of you and he and he's so like he's so happy right now in the bible it says like he leaves the 99 sheep just to find one lost sinner maybe you're that one lost sinner right now and he's with you right now and he loves you so much but yeah i just want to let you guys know you're loved so much no matter what people have told you you are loved no matter what happened in your life, you're loved. There's no excuses. He died for you too. He died for that sin you're struggling with. He loves you so much. But anyways, guys, I hope you have a beautiful, blessed day and that the Lord blesses you. And yeah, have fun on your journey with Christ. Have fun. Because being a Christian is not boring at all. So I just pray he gives you the fire of God and the passion of God. But yeah, goodbye, everybody. God bless.